Hey everyone, it's Melanie of Art Studio 320 and this week's project is a big one. This is an entertainment center. It comes in two parts. Here's the bottom part, the base. It has four drawers, two smaller ones on the top, two bigger ones on the bottom. And this one is where you put your TV and your VCR and maybe even a CD player or a DVD player if you really want to get up there. The customer that has commissioned me to do this piece would like it painted and I'm going to paint it with fusion mineral paint. It, the color is cathedral taupe. It's a very pretty color. She would also like me to embellish with some gold. So I will be doing that up there on the top. But the biggest problem I have here is the inside, this entertainment part. She wants all of that gone. She wants to use this as a wardrobe. This is a very unique problem and I've got some of it solved, but it's a big one. Stick around. <laughs> I realized that the only way I was going to get to those screws on the inside was by taking the back off. There are a lot of staples <laughs> in this thing and some of them came out a little bit easier than others. Now the first staple I came to that I couldn't get out, I thought, well maybe if I kind of loosen the edge, get underneath the masonite board, I can loosen it that way. Uh, don't do that. <laughs> it went right through the staple. I have to get my screwdriver, which is very small by the way, underneath here. And there is a little bit of give because it's soft on the back of this paneling or what I would call masonite board. That's what it looks like to me, but it does not, <laughs> this is not easy. And you know, I don't want to cause damage to the back of this if I can avoid it, because I have to put the staples back in. <sighs> well, I need both my hands, but I think you get the idea. So I've got, quite a few out already. In fact, this is all I have left. Oh, and the bottom. So I have about half out. We'll get it done. I used a small hammer to just tap on the back of the screwdriver so that it would gently go underneath the screw instead of trying to jam it under there. And it worked. As you can see, I'm happy because now I can get my hand in there, but that's not all there is to it. It's always nice to have a surprise. Once I took the panel off, <laughs> I can get right in there. I don't have to go up around. Got some up there, right up there. So I think what I need to do is just take these three out and then those three out and then it should all come out. So let's see if we can get it out of here. Now in theory, it was easier, but my driver barely fits in there. And once I started to pull the screw out, my driver got stuck. <laughs> So then I would have to maneuver it out and at some angles it didn't quite work right. Now you'll see in a few minutes I figure out an easier way but I've already gone through all the trouble of getting all of the screws out. What can I say? <laughs> Sometimes there's just so much to think about and I'm trying to figure out what screws I need to pull out to make this thing come out. And it's not all of them because there's a lot of pieces of wood attached to that middle part. Mm. 
All right, so those are the same. I'm videotaping so I can see, because I can't get my head in there. It's the same kind of screw, which um, is this tip. So if I can get it in there, I can't see, so maybe this will help. <laughs> maybe. I needed both hands to get those screws out but it did help to see exactly where the screws were uh, just get my camera up there and at least look now I couldn't pull the screw out completely I had to pull it out a little and then pull my driver out and then unscrew it otherwise my driver got wedged in there and I couldn't get it out I left this footage in to show you that you really need to examine the piece you're working on to figure out what structure needs to stay in place and what you can actually unscrew and take, a, take out without destroying the whole piece. It's important. <laughs> I thought the camera was on, but it, I got it down. And it actually, it fell, but I put some cushions down here and it was actually anticlimactic. I thought it would be much crazier and banging things, but it just lightly fell onto there. I used a rubber mallet. I gently tapped on the corners and you could feel it coming down a little bit. And then I went to the other side and then it just kind of fell. The bottom piece offered up a whole new bunch of challenges. I could not get to these brackets I needed to get to without taking this board off on the back, which turned out to be, you know, I needed it. I had to put it back on when it was done because it was, it was stapled to the two sides and then screwed into the bottom and it actually was helping the structure to stay square. Now with that board on. <laughs> Maybe if I take this off. Which I should have done earlier. Would have made the top part a little easier. All right, I will admit, I have progressive eyeglasses, <laughs> so it's hard to see in these small spaces when it's far away and up close and far away, it's just tough. So that could be part of my problem. <laughs> but overall, I mean, it's a tight space, so give me a little credit here. So the word that you need to remember is patience and how about breathe <laughs> just keep breathing count to 10 whatever it is you have to do because this can definitely be frustrating but ooh so satisfying yep.
going to make my vinegar and water mixture. So I put my water in. Now I had a little bit of vinegar and water in here. I have this much water. So I'm going to go up to here. Now it doesn't have to be exact, so don't worry if I go <laughs> a little over or under. A little bit more. Right. There. There's my cleaner. ready to go. There was something really gross on the bottom there, so I had to make sure I cleaned it really well before I moved on. I took off the drawers simply because that's how I do it. I want to make this job as easy as possible, and by taking off the doors, it just makes it easier for me. I needed to scuff sand everything. I didn't need to sand a lot. I used a 120 grit with my orbital sander. So I hand sanded with 80 grit, and then I went back with my orbital sander and just gave it a quick once over. Had a few repairs to do. And just a quick note, I'm showing you there that if your wood filler, if, if you're using plastic wood X, if it starts to dry up, and even if it dries up completely, you can reconstitute it and use it. Don't ever throw it away. You also saw me using Goo Gone. That's because there were two spots on the top there that had some scotch tape on it. <laughs> Maybe it was from a party. You know, they put a little streamer up there. I don't know. But anyway, Goo Gone works if you've got some uh, residue from tape. The color I'm using is Cathedral Taupe. It is from Fusion Mineral Paint. I really do like this paint. It's an all-in-one. It has top coat in it. And here's Teddy. Teddy is terrified of the Amazon truck, and that is him <laughs> jumping through my piece to get back inside as fast as possible. Poor guy. Anyway, back to the piece. There he is. All better. <laughs> After I'm finished painting the first coat, I take my finishing pad with a very high grit, meaning it's a very fine grit, and I go over the whole thing and smooth out any spots that may have been a little bumpy or whatever, and it just makes a really nice finish. And then I go back and put on the second coat. I was pleasantly surprised when I took these doors off. They were really light and another, it's pine. So it's a much lighter wood than, oh, I don't know, oak. <laughs> And without forgetting, here's the base. And I went through all the same steps, except I had no demo on this part. I just scuff sanded, and then I wiped it down with a tack cloth. Then I painted, sanded again, repainted, and that was it. Now I'm on to the drawers. There wasn't anything special I was doing with the feet. I was just going to paint them. So I scuff sanded them and gave them two coats of paint.
My customer requested some gold embellishment, so I'm using Dixie Belle's Gilding Wax in gold and a soft brush to just apply some of the gold in just a few areas, obviously on the top, and then there's a little trim around right below that that I did. And that's about it, just a little bit, but it just adds a little bit of a, an accent to this piece. The great part about gilding wax is if you get it on areas that you don't want it to be, and if you look carefully, you can see there's a couple spots, you can use some mineral spirits to wipe it back off and it comes off right away. Now, if the gilding wax has had time to cure or dry, then it may not come off as easily, if at all. I'm not even sure. Putting doors back on can be a challenge. They're bulky, they're awkward, it's the way you have to hold them. You need more than two hands, <laughs> usually. But these had these little spring-loaded uh, parts that popped right into these holes that were in the doors. And it you could put them in there and they stayed. And then I could just screw them in so they would stay in. But I'll tell you what, that made all the difference in the world. Now these doors are weird. You open them and then they slide in on the sides so you can keep it open without the doors being in the way. So those, the mechanism there had to be pulled all the way to the edge where you're putting the doors on. And for some reason, the right one was a little bit harder to get on than the left. While I'm standing on the back side of the armoire, obviously, <laughs> because last night I filmed me putting the back back on, and I also filmed me putting the hardware back on. Unfortunately, when I was transferring the footage from my iPad to my hard drive, I lost the video. So I'm here to explain what I did because I feel like it would be incomplete otherwise. When I took the back off, I discovered there were screws in the corners and I put those back in and that was very easy because there was already a hole there. Thankfully, they're not stripped or anything like that. Instead of using staples, I used cut tacks. They're, they look like this. They were easy to stick back in one of the holes of the staples, and most of the time I was able to find a hole behind it, so they went in fairly easily. And I put them all the way around, and this is <laughs> extremely secure, probably more secure than it needs to be. And I put them all the way around, and this is <laughs> extremely secure, probably more secure than it needs to be. And over on this side, the hardware that had been on this they were very large and very chunky so i decided to use this hardware that i found in my hardware box and i thought these were perfect now i gave my customer the option of painting them gold i was prepared to paint them gold i tried out one i spray painted it gold to see what it would look like I sent her a picture to see what she thought, and she actually liked the black knobs, which was great. I only spray painted one. I was tempted to spray paint all of them, but I listened to my conscience and said, wait till you hear from the customer, because I thought that she would go with the gold and was surprised that she went with the black, and I was so grateful that I didn't go ahead and spray paint all of them because that would have been a real pain. I did have to clean off one, but it was so easy. All I had to do was take mineral spirits and wipe off the knob. Now, if I had waited a day or two, that might not work, 
but as it was I had only it had only been like a couple hours so no big deal well friends that's all I have for you this week I hope you enjoyed this video I want to say that when you are working on a commission piece you have to look at it through a different lens you have to look through it through the customers lens and you have to think about the fact that whatever you do it's for the customer not for you so you have to approach it differently you may be a little restrained creatively but you are providing a service that someone has asked you to do and you've given them an estimate I hope uh, you always want to give them an estimate ahead of time I highly recommend that you don't give them just a flat price because this is what happens sometimes things come up that you didn't foresee for example with this piece she wanted me to take out the parts on the inside well when I started to do that or I started to look at it to do that I realized that it wasn't going to be that easy it was going to take more time and I wasn't even sure if I was going to be able to do it I was lucky I was able to take the back off and it wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be but it still took a lot of time you have to at least make a little bit of room for those unforeseen things that come up that are going to take time and sometimes more money so be careful about giving your customer a flat rate ahead of time unless you're very sure of that price because the whole point here is you are providing a service and they are providing you the funds to do that service and that includes your hard labor that comes first do not underestimate your talents thanks for being here Good luck on your next project. See you next time. You can do it. <laughs>